Uh-oh. Normally when I buy scam products, I'm expecting the scam product and I buy it just to see how scammy it was. In this instance, I bought this ozone sterilizer thinking it was going to be an ozone sterilizer. And I noticed when I plugged it in, well, it, it lit green and it didn't make the hiss that I'd normally expect. Certainly no smell of ozone. And if you look at the small print on the side, it says... Our Flory Ultrasonic Pest Repel uh, Fleas, Mice, Ants, UK Standard. And yet on the other side it says, uh, it's got all the text, says UV light length, 254 nanometer, which is a germicidal wavelength, but not an ozone generating one. Uh, ozone output 130 milligrams an hour, using live 10,000 hours. Mm, very odd. Let me open this and show you what's inside. I also noticed when I looked close with the light shone through the side there is a little piezo disc suggesting it is an ultrasonic pest repeller but um i uh didn't hear any ultrasonic noise tell you what i'm gonna plug this in and you can actually you can test this for me right just let me grab like just let me uh grab an extension lead one moment please so here it is glowing away dimly and every so often it will Dim out and back in again, just, oh, there it goes. Ooh, I am doing something. But let me know. I don't even know if this would couple through the the YouTube's audio system, but here's the disc. I'll hold it up to the microphone. And you can tell me if you hear anything. I can't hear anything. This is where I've just deafened all the young people with headphones on. I'm not getting anything here. I think this merits further investigation. Let's open it. The light is coming back. Watch your eyes. I don't understand it. It says QC passed. How could this be, given that it's not QC passed? Uh, this screwdriver was sent to me by Phil. Thank you, Phil. It's uh, He hand-machined it. It's very nice. Very heavy and chunky. Takes the standard bits held in magnetically. Quite a powerful magnet in there. So let's remove these screws and open it and see what's inside. If this is a scam, I will get in touch with the seller and I will report it to them and say, you know, I'll say not as requested. Well, there's the piezo disc. Is it going to be doing anything? Uh, this is glued in. Is this going to go? Oh, oh, yes, yes, it is going to come off easily. What's the circuitry like? There is a microcontroller. It could well be doing. There's a, a few LEDs. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll take a picture of this and we can explore it closer. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete, nothing particularly special. Uh, it does have piezoelectric circuitry. It's got a resistor in series with a piezoelectric device. Maybe it is sweeping the frequency. I could have scoped that in the oscilloscope, but to be honest, this thing has left me so disenchanted, I'm, I'm not going to waste my time on it. It's useless. It's a quack product anyway. The power supply is very simple. It's got a single diode and a resistor with a capacitor, and that's kind of a bit weird, but I'll cover that in the schematic. Uh, that limits the current to this electrolytic which uh, and this decoupling capacitor and this Zeno diode to give roughly 4 or 5 volts. Uh, I say 4 or 5 volts because it's 5 volts when the LEDs are dimmed out and 4 volts when the LEDs are dimmed up. Uh, we have the microcontroller switching those LEDs via two lines, um, and then one 1K resistor uh, between the microcontroller and positive and the piezoelectric. Let's bring in the schematic. Here's the schematic. Mains AC come in, goes through the diode. That's the positive rail. The uh, neutral down here, normally you'd think this is a capacitive dropper, but it's not in the normal sense because normally that requires a push-pull to charge and discharge capacitor. And normally it would be coupled to the bridge rectifier. So what they've done in this case, they've put a resistor across that capacitor, but the resistor is actually passing current to the circuit. But also on the other half of the sine wave, the capacitor will provide uh, current flow. When this goes positive and this goes negative, current will flow through a circuit. The capacitor will charge up. But on the other half of the sine wave, it discharges this capacitor via this resistor. Um, so the resistor is doing double duty. It's uh, limiting the current to the circuit, but also discharging that capacitor and it's taking a bit of a share of the load, I guess. It's very cheap, minimalist circuitry. There is the 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, there's a 100 nano uh, decoupling capacitor and the Zener diode 
which I'd guess is probably 5.1 volts. That's a fairly standard value, and the voltage caps at about 5 volts. There's the anonymous microcontroller. I'll just put question marks all over it. It's anonymous. Uh, three LEDs and three resistors, 2K resistors. Uh, one of the LEDs goes to its own pin. The others go to their own pin. They could probably just bridge them all together. The current is not going to be exceeding the capability of this. Not sure why they did that. And then we get the piezoelectric element here, the little paper with a 1K resistor in it. And I'm guessing this pin must be going basically positive, negative, positive, negative to charge and discharge that to produce ultrasonic sound that probably sweeps in some or goes to various special frequencies that get rid of rats and spiders and things like that, as they usually say. Uh, very strange. It's worth mentioning this capacitor and this diode uh, is not very microcontroller friendly. Um, it depends. The performance of these capacitors will determine what sort of spikes this microcontroller sees in the Paduk range of super cheap microcontrollers. Kind of say not really suitable for, for capacitive supplies because uh, it can damage them. Uh, that's it. That is our fake ozone generator that is also a very suspicious quack type of uh, bug repairer. Other things worthy of note, this is a standard ozone module that you might find in such things like this with a power supply, and it is sized. It's got little brackets here that could accommodate a ceramic plate in there, or probably this module might go back there. I think it probably would. So it's got the positions for it, but they've just glued a piezoelectric disc onto this. So this case probably was originally intended for use as an ozone generator. There's a little spider, a very tiny spider. Goodbye, spider. Let's uh, sweep you off the bench. Um, so that is uh, it. It could have been an ozone generator. It was probably designed as one, but isn't actually an ozone generator. Very strange. I wonder why they changed their mind. Maybe they had problems with the circuitry. Uh, it's also notable that the, the circuit board is glued in after being wedged in between these pillars. It looks as though it's got a single hole in the middle to actually hold perhaps a round circuit board in with a little high voltage module or transformer. Goodness knows. But it's obviously had that little insert there for a screw, but they've not actually used it. They've just glued it in. It's cheap, 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 cheap. But there we go. Um, now, here comes the interesting bit. I am going to contest this on eBay, I'm going to say. You know, this is not as promised. And uh, in the description down below, I will uh, let you know what the result of that is. I'll give you a blow-by-blow -blow, um, indication of uh, what went down when I did that. But in the meantime, that is it. It's a piece of crap, but worth taking apart anyway. <laughs>